we want to speak to your soul and your spirit today. How many of you feel weary in your soul, feel weary in your spirit? Have you ever asked yourself, if I could see what Jesus is looking at, how would life look like? You know, I don't know if you've ever asked yourself or ever thought about how sad it is that many people give up at the point of breakthrough. I mean, at the point of actually entering the promised land, they give up because they can't see the process that God has taken them through and the process that God is doing and where God is taking them. So because they're just focused on what they can see on the outside, they give up. And that's exactly what the enemy of our soul wants to achieve. He wants us to abandon our faith. He wants us to doubt. He wants us to feel like God has abandoned us. He wants us to feel depressed. He wants us to feel like there's no point in continuing. This is what we want to talk about today because God has really put it on our hearts to encourage the timid and weary soul that, yes, we should not give up. If Joseph had given up in the dry pit or in the prison, he would have never become prime minister of Egypt. <laughs> so we have to just think about the fact that God never gives up on us. So therefore, we should never, ever, ever give up on God. We really want to encourage you, whatever situation you're facing right now, whatever part of the process that you are, remember that whilst we're on this earth, yes, there will be trouble. But when Jesus is with us, our perspective changes because we're not facing it alone. And you know, sometimes the desire or the decision to give up, it's not a conscious decision that we make that, yes, I'm going to give up on God today. Often it's a slow fade. Often it's a slow fade into doubting, into worrying, into not trusting, into being negative. Hmm. That is why today we want to ask God for the courage to hope and not give up. That is our prayer today. And we know that many of you might be thinking, well, I, I don't feel like giving up. Well, I'm sure in the past you might have experienced that temptation. So many of us experience the same temptation to give up. Yet, how do we respond to that temptation? Remember, Jesus is with us every moment. And each moment he gives us the, the courage, the strength, the conviction to stand our ground if we receive that in our heart. So take courage today. We want to speak to your soul. We want to speak to your spirit. And we want to make sure that you don't give up because breakthrough is around the corner. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't cry when you're about <laughs> to enter the promised land. You've, you've passed through the wilderness. As you enter the promised land, don't, don't give up at this point. And what you're saying is exactly the truth. We, it's at the point of breakthrough that the devil will harm you, will fight you mm. for you to give up when you're at the brink of breakthrough. When you're climbing a mountain, faith is climbing a mountain, right? The toughest part of mountain climbing is when you reach the summit. Mm. Everybody know. The summit of the mountain is so steep. So steep, it takes extra might, extra forces to reach that summit. But don't forget what the Bible says. David knew that and cry mm. out. He said, who can take me to the rock or the mountain that is higher than me? Mm. David cried that. He said, how I wish I would be a dove or a bird. I will fly over the trouble and run to the presence of God. <laughs> because he was surrounded by enemies everywhere. Mm, we all want a fast flight there. We want a shortcut. <laughs> so I want to tell you, there is no man of faith, no heroes of faith, who has not gone through the wilderness of doubt. Mm. In the wilderness, you have no life-supporting material. In the wilderness, there's nothing on the outside to sustain your faith. In the wilderness, everything is dried. You may be abandoned by people because of your circumstances. You may condemn yourself yourself because of what you have done. You may say, ah, God will not hear my prayers. God will not answer my prayer. We give up easily. Our mind may give up. Mm. Our understanding may give up. But God never, never gives up. So are you in doubt? Are you in fear? In desperation? Mm. You have stopped going to church. 
you have stopped reading your Bible. You have stopped praying because you think you have no hope for an answer. You have condemned yourself or people have condemned you. You have given up your faith. Simon Peter had the same issue. When Jesus surrendered himself to those who were taking him to the cross, Peter denied Jesus three times. What's the reason? Why is the reason why we gave up? Sometimes we give up because of fear. When you realize why we give up, it's because we engage our body, our own strength, our mental strength. That's why we give up. Mm, we see it as a, a human, a human fight, a human struggle. What God has called you to be is beyond your capacity. Mm. It's beyond your wisdom. God always asks you to do something impossible to the flesh. Impossible. So if you try now to figure God out mm. with your intellectual, you will soon give up. But glory be to God. God does not mind doubt as long as you are seeking answer from him in the midst of your doubt. I repeat. God, Jesus, does not mind your doubt. He does not mind your weaknesses. He does not mind your desperate situation. He does not mind your fear as long as you are still seeking answer from him in the midst of that terrible situation you are in. You have prayed. Many have prayed. Mm -hmm. And say, ah, God has not answered my prayer. Who told you that? Who told you God has not heard you? Mm -hmm. Who told you God has not answered? You don't know the prayer you are offered for so many years are not lost. When we pray, the answer we receive from God is not determined by our time, our method, our ways, but how God chooses to implement his will in the request you, 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 you brought to his throne. Mm. God may answer quickly. God may take a time to answer. He may answer in different ways. So God always answers the prayer of faith. Take mm. note of this, whether you doubt or not. God always answers the prayer of faith, but he does not answer it to the letter. Mm, not always the way we expect. Not the way you expect. Mm. Not the time you expect. Everything from God is ruled by his time and ways. Mm. I want to give you, before we go to the proof text, uh, just a little example. Israel faced a terrible situation in Jeremiah chapter 42. God was warning his people, come back to me, come back to me. Forsake your ways. Forsake your ways. Because incoming judgment was about to come. It is never the will of God to see people suffer. Please, I'm talking to you about the will of God. Jesus. It is not his will to see people suffer. It is not his will to see people die. It is not his will to see people lost. Even those who say, I'm an enemy of God. I don't believe him. I don't want him. I'm this, I'm this. God never sees them as a man. He sees them as God. He still loves them. He never gives up on them because mm. time belongs to God. Mm. Don't forget what Jesus said. Many of the last will be the first. Many of the first will be the last. Mm. When the judgment was about to come, let me give just one example before Ruth introduced us to the proof text of this message. Jeremiah chapter 42 the people came to Jeremiah, to the prophet. Maybe Ruth can read. You are, you are, I like your accent. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 32 from verse 2. So they were afraid. They said, let's go and pray to God. They themselves said, "Ah, God will never answer our prayer. Let's call the prophet. Let the prophet pray for us. Maybe God will answer him. So they came to Jeremiah. Please, can you pray for us? The situation is desperate. God does not speak to us. Maybe God will speak to you. Let's listen to what happened. Please let our petition be acceptable to you and pray for us to the Lord your God for all this remnant since we are left but a few of many as you can see. 
that the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. Hmm. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard, indeed. You see what Ruth said? Show us the way and what to do. Mm -hmm. Are you in a situation where there's no way out for you? Are you in a situation where you don't know what to do? Mm. Continue. What did Jeremiah say? Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard. Indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. Say it again. We, we, we're going to break down the words of Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah said what? Indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words. I will, according to your words, mean I will bring your petition to God. Not my words, but your words, your request. I will bring it to God. Continue. And it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from whatever you. Whatever God answers me, I will say it to you. Now, go to verse 14. Listen very carefully. Abe, Jeremiah went and began to pray. When did the answer came? Go to verse 14 and listen. Saying, no, but we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor be hungry for bread, and there we will dwell. Hmm. Then hear how the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you wholly set your faces to enter Egypt and go to dwell there, then it shall be that the sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The famine of which you were afraid shall follow close after Good. you there in Egypt. The, this is the danger. And there you shall die. They want you to run to Egypt to look for alternative. Mm. And God said, don't go there. Sometime we may face situation and we want to have our own convenient alternatives from human hands, human perspective. Mm. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is such a way that seems good to you, but the end is a way of destruction. So when we pray, what matters to hear what God says? Let's go to verse 7. Let's listen now carefully. And it happened after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. What notice? What do you notice there? What do you notice in that sentence? After 10 days. 10 days. <laughs> Jeremiah prayed. He was praying. He was praying. God never answered the first day, neither the second day. 10 days after, mm. the answer came from heaven. 10 days. Only God knows. What Would they, be, would they have strength and endurance to wait for 10 days before they acted for God's answer? Remember Saul? Someone say, wait for seven days. And he went to do the sacrifice himself. Mm. Now, after 10 days, God gave the answer to Jeremiah. They read again. Verse 17, verse 14. Seven. Verse seven. And it happened that after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he called Johanan, the son of Kariah, all the captains of the forces which were with him and all the people from the last, even from the least, even to the greatest mm. and said to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel mm -hmm. to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. Mm. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down and I will plant you and not pluck you up mm -hmm. for I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Listen to that. Oh my God. This is the heart of God. Mm. The people behave extremely badly to the extent judgment was coming because of their behavior. Mm. Now, God said to Jeremiah, remain in this land. Don't run away from the situation. That is the issue. Don't run away. Mm. Stay where you are. Don't be afraid. Mm. Stay where you are. Keep your position. Don't give up. Where you are afraid, I will come and rescue you there. Don't leave your position, stay there. Mm. And God say, I will relent of what? Of the disaster that I brought upon you. If you are willing to obey me, mm. I will remove the disaster you are afraid of. Mm. But you have to follow my ways, not your ways. That is God for you. God chooses what you go through. We choose how we go through it. We choose how we go through it. Mm. 
Whatever is the situation you are facing, don't try to run out. Stay put. Keep your position. Keep on praying. And God will give you the way out in the midst of that situation where you are. Don't run away. Don't take alternative. Keep your solid ground. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because God never gives up. Now, why God never gives up? Because his ways are not our ways. What you see yourself at the end may not be the end at all from God's perspective. Mm. The situation at hand may point you to death, to destruction. Oh my God, where are we going? But God's word points you to life. Mm. Now, <laughs> do you know what God has in store for you for now and for tomorrow? Do you know that your present situation cannot determine your future? Do you know what is in the heart of God, in the mind of God for you? I'm speaking to people who mm. believe. Mm. But there are so many people today who once was very zealous for God. Reading their Bible, going to church, fellowshipping. Their zeal was so strong. Mm. But today, they have given up their faith. I've so much read and see people say, oh, I've lost my faith. Mm. I no longer believe. I no longer, no longer believe. Mm. I've lost my faith. I no longer believe. Some even went to the extent of saying, I'm not a Christian. What makes you a believer? What makes you a Christian? Is not on the outside. Mm. It's not your background. What makes you a Christian? is what Jesus Christ has done for you at the cross of Calvary. Mm. God's plan, God's ways are beyond our mental imaginations. Mm. So I want to take you back to the proof text of today. We go to the book of Isaiah chapter 49 and listen very carefully. We start from verse 1 to verse 14 to tell you in the midst of that situation you dread, in the midst of that situation you think is terrible, shameful, abandoned, in the midst of that situation, God is saying something. Mm. Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. Mm. He has made mention of my name, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Good. This means, do you know, do you believe that before you were born, God knew you. Mm. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, before your father and your mom saw your body the day of your birth, God has seen you in the womb. Who forms your spirit within you is God. Who created you in the womb? It is God. God say, before I call you, before you form in the womb, I knew you by name. Mm. Continue. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me and mm. made me a polished shaft. Mm. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Mm. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I you, have you are my what? Servant. Do you know that the calling of God, some calling are before you are born, God has predestined you for something you don't know. You don't know what God has in store for you. Some, no one is born righteous, not even one. We all came from the same world. We all came from the dark. No one is born righteous, not even one. Mm. The question is, in the midst of the confusion and darkness of situations all around the world, there is an unseen, hidden plan of God for every single person. Do you know your value before God? You may not see anything good in yourself. You yourself. You may not see anything good in a person. But what is good? It takes spiritual eyes to see it. You may see your own weakness. You may see your background. God never considers your background to determine your future. Go and read your Bible very well. All those Jesus called for greater responsibilities, he took them from, from grassroots. Go read your Bible. No intelligence, 
No powerful. God chooses the weak. God chooses the humble. So we can depend on him in every situation of our lives. Go and read. Mention every person in the Bible. God called to greater offices. God took them out of nothing. Go and look Jephthah. We all Jephthah. Judges 11. Who was it? An arm robber. You recall arm robber? He was in the forest attacking people. And God made him a judge of Israel. When the time came. Your beginning is not what matters to God. What you are today is not what matters to God. You need to find out what God has in store for you in your life. That's why it's so important to look at things the way God sees it and not just be completely governed by what you see on the outside, your situation, because you can be at the point of entering the promised land and then you give up. That's why it's such a temptation for us to just base our life on what we see around us. No. Many people may speak negatively about you. Who are you? You are nothing. You are worthless. Sometimes even the people that gave birth to you will be the person that condemn you. You are nothing. You know? Useless person. You hear people cursing you, saying so things, those words. Mm. David's father never considered him anything good apart from being a shepherd. Neither did his brothers. Neither his brothers. Mm. But you need to have the eyes of Jesus. I, today we are talking about Jesus Christ. We are talking about the Lord Jesus. Mm. Who was Jesus? Is Jesus a mere man or the Lord God? Who was Jesus? The way he came into this world showed that Jesus is not a mere man. He was born out of a virgin. Am I right? Mm. When Jesus was born, he was not born in a palace. The Bible says he was born in a manger. Mm. There was no room for him in the hotel. Yes, Jesus was born in a manger, but he never stayed there. Where is Jesus? To the highest heights in heaven. God does not follow the ways of man. God has his own ways. Ruth, let's continue. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and Thank in you. vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord. Say the first sentence again. Then I said, I have labored in vain. Thank you. How many of you listen to me has said this? Mm -hmm. How many of us are saying this every day? I have labored in vain. Mm. I have prayed to God in vain. I've I have fasted. A, I've prayed in vain. In vain. <laughs> I've I, worked in the church in vain. I pay my tithe in vain. I pay my offering in vain. I've given up many things that I could have done to satisfy my, my flesh in vain. You know, many people begin to measure maybe what they've given up in the pursuit of God because they don't see a result. This is where we begin to slide into giving up and we begin to see see this the kingdom of God as a natural thing. It's not natural. It's a spiritual kingdom. Let's continue. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing mm -hmm. and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work and my work with my God. Mm -hmm. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb now, to be his servant? listen to what God answers. To those who say, I have given up. To bring Jacob back to him so mm -hmm. that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, if it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel, I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles this means that you should be my salvation to the ends God of the earth. God has a plan higher than you. Mm. God is richer than your dreams. Mm. He's greater than your weakness. Mm. His ways are higher than our thoughts and ways. We are the one limiting ourselves in the one foot ceiling, mm. God wants sky to be your limit. You are the one looking at your circumstances. Where God wants you to look beyond the circumstances mm. to see what he has in store behind that situation. Mm. The devil does not want you to go beyond your situation. Devil come to condemn you, to destroy your faith, to say, ah, where is your God? Can't you see? You're wasting your time and energy. Mm. That's the devil for you. 
But look beyond that situation, you will see the plan of God, the hidden plan of God in your life. Mm. Continue reading. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to mm. him who man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, <laughs> to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, Good. princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Are you despised by men? Are you disappointed by men? This is the question I'm talking about disappointment. Mm. Today, many give up because of disappointment. Why? Because they expect so many things on man. Mm. They put their faith on man, what man can do. So they are sensitive. Their faith is influenced by how they are doing. Mm. I pray nothing happened. How they are treated. No reward for men. It's because when you listen to many people that are giving up their faith, it's because of what people behave mm, towards them. We, we, set a, we set ourselves up for disappointment because we have our expectations so, so high. Who is your God? Mm. Who is your reward? It's God. Who is your helper? It's God. And God is not a man that will lie. Mm. God is faithful. Mm. Who is, what is the object of your faith? When you think you are abandoned, you don't know you are close. <laughs> when you think God will allow all human help to go, to abandon you, so you can see his grace in your life. Continue reading. Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Thank you. In an acceptable time, what does this mean to you and I? I mean, God has an appointed time in his agenda and calendar for your life. Mm. No human being can push it forward. <laughs> no one can delay it. You cannot beat the gun. There is an appointed time settled by God mm. in his agenda in the course of your life and destiny where he will meet you at the point of salvation. Mm. Continue reading. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. This is exactly what Apostle Paul said. Saul, who was persecuting the church, hating Jesus, fighting the way, never knew he was predestined from the womb to be an apostle of Jesus, but he wasn't aware of it. Until the time came, God's appointed time, God's to fulfill his plan in your life. God will do something extraordinary that will reverse your life 360 degrees. God will turn your life around when this time comes. He's watching you. So when you pray, God is listening. And when you stop praying, God begins to act to fulfill his will in that matter. I repeat, when you pray, God listens. The question I'm asking you, how do we know that God is hearing our prayer? Is there any evidence that God has heard me? That's why we need to have faith and believe. Is there any evidence? I'm asking the question even to you. To everybody. Peace of heart. <laughs> that is it. Mm. How did you know God has answered you? Peace of heart. Mm. This body may be shaking. Mm. Your emotion may be high. Your mind may be completely lost. Hmm. But if you sit down, deep inside you, there is peace of heart. Hmm. There is peace of heart. This means God is in control. <laughs> Nothing out of God's control can happen to you. No matter how unsteady the world is around you, no matter how you look at the, the situation of your country, the world, you begin to lose hope, you begin to get discouraged. Don't ever think that God has given up on you. Moses, <sighs> did Moses give up? Yes or no? I said to you, for me, Moses in the wilderness gave up. Mm. He ran away to the wilderness mm. for his life. And the Bible said for good 40 years, Moses was a shepherd in the house of Jethro, in Media, far away from the people in Egypt. But one day, 
when Moses had forgotten anything, I can say, <laughs> at the burning bush, the light shows up. It is never too late for God as far as it is the will of God. Mm. And that's why God never, ever, ever gives up on us. I mean, just look at the two thieves that were crucified next to Jesus. That should let you know that God never gives up on us. And God is never late. Mm. Your vision, your dream, we told you, is not ruled by your time. It's not ruled by our clock, but God's appointed time. Mm. By the way, we heard that they changed the time here. <laughs> God never changes his time. God's time is ruled by the clock of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And when it is time for God, in the midst of your situation, he will touch your life around. Peter gave up at the seesaw. Couldn't catch feet. In failure. Desperate situation. And that's where God met him. That's when Jesus came. Mm. And get him out of that situation. Mm. Continue reading. Listen to what God said. They shall feed along the roads, and their pastures shall be on all desolate heights. Mm. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, mm -hmm. neither heat nor sun shall strike them. Mm. For he who has mercy on them will lead them, even by the springs of water he will guide them. Mm. I will make each of my mountains a road, and my highway shall be elevated. Surely these shall come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west, and, those, and these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains. For the mm. Lord has comforted his people Comfort. and will have mercy on his afflicted. Mm -hmm. But me Zion said, the mm. Lord has forsaken me mm -hmm. and my Lord has forgotten me. Mm -hmm. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Stop. <sighs> this is what I wanted to come. Say it again. Can a woman... No, say what you say. But Zion said, the Lord but has... you, listen to me. You, you have... my brother... <sighs> You, my sister, you who stop praying, you who doubt Jesus, you who are weary, you who said, ah, will God answer me? God has forsaken me. This is what God said. Mm. God is asking you a question. Mm -hmm. What did God say? Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. God say, can a mother forsake his nursing child. Mm. Even if such mother can forsake you, God say, I will never forsake you. Who is closer to you? Your mom, even your dad. Your mom, you will sit with your mom in her womb. If the woman whom God used to create you, to nurture you in her womb, can forsake you, and God say, I will never forsake you. Mean God's promise in your life. Nobody can remove it. Mm. No situation can remove it. The Bible says God's calling and his gift are irrevocable if you are elected from God. Mm. His calling, his gift in your life are irrevocable. That's what the Bible says. Go into Romans chapter 11. God is not a man. Mm. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. I think it's verse 19 or 29. He's not, not a man 23. and you should lie. Yes. What God said will surely come to pass. Mm. His ways are not your ways. Now, what is your situation today that causes you to doubt? What caused you to give up? Say, I'm not a believer. I want to tell you, we're going to choose for you how Jesus change the life of some people that were in the same situation who gave up completely in the Bible. Mm. We are going to start first by the Samaritan woman in mm. the book of John chapter 4. The Bible says that she was what? An outcast. What is an outcast? An outcast is someone who has no right to belong. An outcast, she was a foreigner to the commonwealth of Israel being a Samaritan woman. She was, she gave up because the Bible says she, she, she was having disappointment in life. Mm. She married five men. She was disappointed by men. Disappointment, disappointment, and she gave up completely. <laughs> she was bitter with life. Exactly. What happened? Jesus came to her, not her to Jesus. Mm. When you give up, you stop praying. You stop looking for Jesus. You stop looking for God. But God is moving towards you. 
That's the difference between you and God. When you give up, you have no hope. Jesus never gives up. He's walking towards you. She didn't know that as she was walking in her depression, in her bitterness, in her sorrow towards the well, Jesus, the Redeemer, the Messiah, was walking towards her yes. for a divine appointment. So many have surrendered to their situation, mm. to their fear, to their doubt, while their heart is still dreaming for miracle, mm. for breakthrough, for success, for salvation. I repeat again, many today has given up their faith. Mm. Many has surrendered because of the situation, because of doubt and fear, while their heart deep inside of them are still dreaming for blessing, for breakthrough. And that is what Jesus considers. The dream in your heart. The dream mm. in your heart, my dear brothers and sisters. Mm. The dream in your heart. The situation has completely blindfold you. You forgot about your dream. You forgot about everything because of situation. Jesus sees that there's a light there. And the he devil can rekindle that light. The devil sees the star. He know you have a star. Mm. The three of my guys saw the star. Hmm? Mm. They can see the spirit. Herod did everything to kill all the children because he doesn't want the, the Messiah to come from there. Mm. That they cannot stop God's. The question, do you know whom you are? What is God for you? The light of God's revelation in your life. Do you know it? So, Jesus, there was a barrier. The Bible says, the Samaritan cannot come to the Jews. The Jews cannot come to them. The Jesus for the Jew. But Jesus is the one that breaks the ass, the, the ice. How do you say in English? Did you break the ice? Yeah, break the ice. <laughs> Jesus does not wait for you. He breaks the ice and walks towards you. He's not a respect of person. Who engaged the conversation first? Jesus. Jesus, give me a drink. And she was shocked. How can you, a Jew, ask from me, a Samaritan, for a drink? Now, another person I will tell you. There is a man called Zacchaeus mm. in Luke chapter 19. Who was Zacchaeus? A tax collector. A tax collector. Somebody who has money in a dubious way. Mm. Somebody that stole money, a publican. Bad reputation. Yeah, seen as a traitor of his yes. people. Yes, had money, had seen, way, is somebody, a worldly person. But one day, in the midst of all the riches he had, something in his heart was crying. Mm. He heard about Jesus. Jesus went to Jericho, go and read your Bible, only because of that man. When Jesus came to Jericho, the Bible says there were thousands around him. Am I right? Mm. To the extent that Zacchaeus could not come closer. He has to climb the tree. And Jesus mentioned her, his name. He said, today salvation has come to it's your house. to your house. Mm. He never thought that Jesus knew him. Mm. Nathaniel, is anything good from Nazareth? Who is this man called Jesus? Who is he? When he came, Jesus said, when you were in the fig tree, before he called you, I saw you. Jesus knows everything about you. He's concerned about you. And he's concerned about you. Mm. It does not take a second for him to touch your life. Mm. It's not what makes us Christian. It's not what we do. It's God's grace and mercy. Grace is undeserved what? Favor. Favor. That's why our relationship with God must start with him saving us by grace. And that will make us eternally grateful. Because we are receiving some things that we don't deserve. That relationship must be based on, Jesus, you've done this for me. I don't deserve it. Thank you. Once you know what Jesus has done for you. Thank you. Everything will spring from there. Appreciation will spring from there. And that is what will keep that light burning in your heart. Okay. This is uh, Elizabeth Shonda. It's me, Mother God. I'm going through a lot. Okay. Let me ask you. The man at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says the man was suffering terrible sickness. He was lame. 38 years. 38 years at the pool. The man has have, have given up. Why, why, why he gave up? 
Can you can somebody answer the question? Why the man gave up? Because he said there's, there was no one to help him into the pool. Why? Because he was focusing on people. Mm. If it depends on human beings, you will give up. Man is, unreli- man is not <laughs> reliable. Okay, she's answering you. No marriage at 55 years, no children. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Go and ask Sarah. I'm not saying you're going to wait for 99 years. Nothing is difficult to God. God say, I will make the wilderness in the pool of living waters. Mm. Hmm. So Jesus one day walked towards the pool because of that person. Hmm. When Jesus came, he attended directly to the man. He didn't ask the man to go inside the water. Imagine we are going to the airport and the plane is at the tarmac. And they say the first one we enter, we take the place. Anytime the, the man runs to the airport, the seat are taken over. He cannot write. Before he come to the desk, he cannot come to the desk. One day, imagine somebody came. Instead of going to the desk, somebody bought a private jet and called you just for you. Enter this place and take you to a place of healing and safety. Jesus came purposely mm. for this man. Jesus said to him, do you want to get well? The man said, if I go there, nobody help me. Can't you imagine? Jesus said, Take your mat and walk. That is Jesus Christ for you. Jesus will never ask anybody permission about you. If your heart is for him and you cry in your heart for him, the Lord will show up at his time for you, the day of salvation at the appointed time. He did it for me. Go and see my testimony. I'm going to repeat it again. And for me as well. For every one of us here. <laughs> when you reach a problem, a desperate situation, Mm. They said the end has come. I lived it. The end has come. Where will I be? Where will I go? What will I do, Lord? Mm. In that day, Jesus shows up and my life changed forever. I don't know. <laughs> the fact that we're sitting here today is just testament Look, of God's amazing grace. My dear brother, we are not here to say what pleases you to hear. Mm. It's what we lived. We are sharing with you. Before God Almighty, the witness of heaven. That God is real. Jesus is real. Holy Spirit is now midst. His promises are real for those who believe in him. Now the question is, who else again? Go and read your Bible. So many people who feel condemned by this situation, rejected, mm. hopeless. Jesus came to them directly and changed their lives. So you may be saying, I'm not a believer. I'm not interested by Jesus. I'm not interested by this. Or you could even stand against the gospel. I will tell you about Saul. Are you telling me Saul was waiting for salvation? Hmm? He was was, wanting to destroy the Christians. Fighting Christianity, he wanted to destroy it. He wanted to stop this. Anybody who believed Jesus was in trouble in the eyes of Saul. But Saul never knew that God has predestined him before he was born to be an apostle of Christ. When he was on his way to Damascus to perpetrate evil, Jesus himself came to him and changed his life. The question I'm saying to you, who is the object of your faith? Mm, Exactly, that is the right question. That's exactly what I was thinking now. Because if you say you've lost your faith, who is your faith in? Is, is, is your faith in the God who said, let there be light and light came? Is, is, is your faith in the God that said, well, I can do more than you can even ask or imagine? It, it's not about great faith. It's about having faith in a great God. And, and I think when I hear people say, oh, I've lost my faith. I, I no longer believe. Um, I'm doubting my faith. What's the foundation of your faith? Would, are you, is your faith based on man? Is the disappointment of men, does that affect your faith? Yeah. If your faith is in Jesus Christ, no matter what happens, no matter what comes, it will stay firm because it's rooted in, in the right soil. And no matter what, what storms come, it won't shake because Jesus cannot shake. That is why we just need to ask ourselves, who is our faith in? 
If you're tempted to give up, it's a natural human tendency to want to give up when facing hard times. Don't feel that you're the only one facing that. Everyone goes through a situation in their life where they feel like giving up. Everyone. You're not unique. You're not alone. And Jesus understands that. That's why he promised you that you would not, what will happen to you cannot be more than what you can bear. Because remember, you're not meant to bear it alone. Remember, the Holy Spirit knows the tempter. He knows the questions on the test. Yes. He will Bible. never leave you without the right answer. That means God is always one step ahead of you. Mm. You are in the midst of a situation, you can't move forward. But God is beyond that situation waiting for you. Mm. He's the shepherd. He opened the way. When they were at the Red Sea, all the people gave up. But God was beyond the Red Sea. Mm. God is richer than your dream. He's always one step ahead of you. You are thinking about today, but God is in tomorrow. Do you know your tomorrow? And that's the question. Do you know where you're going to be tomorrow? Go and see every heroes of faith, every successful people today. Mm -hmm. Sometime in their journey in the past, they had room for desperation. Many has given up. They were tempted to give up. Who gives up? It is your brain, your strength that gave up, but not your spirit. Mm. That's where Holy Spirit is wonderful. Mm. When you are overwhelmed, when your strength is gone, your human wisdom is gone, mm. when you say, ah, I gave up, you even don't want to pray, that's when Holy Spirit will start in your heart, in that light. Mm. Please, I'm telling you, don't allow your situation mm. to dictate the direction of your faith. Mm. One sister say, ah, I'm also 42 years, no marriage, no kids. Okay, I want to ask you a question, sister. We'll ask this question. What's her name? Ndivu Guba, huh? it's K-H-U-B-A. When God, when you are married, do you know the purpose of marriage? Do you know the plan of God in your marriage? Do you know what God said about children? Do you know that? Now, because of 42 years, you say, hey, it is impossible. I have no kids. Kids does not come by power and might. It's God that opened the womb to give birth. Do you know God's promises for your life? Do you, at God's appointed time, God can change your life? That's why we believe. Yeah? Go and read why Sarah was barren. We all know that. Rebecca was barren. Rachel was barren. Tamar was barren. Rahab was barren. Ruth was barren. Hmm. Bathsheba had no child until God opened his womb. Hmm. God is in full control of your life. His ways are not our ways. That's the question you have to look to Jesus. That, that's what I want to say, if I can just encourage you, you know. At the point in my life where I can genuinely say that I had no thought of getting married at all. Like that was, I, did, I thought I probably would never even get married. Or I didn't even, that was not on the agenda. I never thought about it at all at that point in my life. In fact, it was at the point in my life where I was clinging closer to the spirit than I ever had before. Because, you know, it was a very difficult, painful, tragic time of my life. And I didn't know. I had to cling to the Spirit of God because there was nowhere else I could cling to. And the closer I got to Jesus, I actually even determined in my heart that I just want to make heaven. I just want to be, I just want to be saved. I just want to make heaven. That was what was in my heart. That was what was in my mind. I never even imagined getting married and yet that was the moment that God brought the divine relationship that brought about this marriage, this union, which is a divine, has a divine purpose. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because if you focus, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God mm. and all the other things will follow. But That's today it. what we do is we seek first everything else and we expect the kingdom of God to follow. No, it's the other way around. If you genuinely seek first the kingdom of God first and put him first, let him satisfy you. Let him uh, breathe his purpose in you, use you, work in your heart, process your heart. 
then when you surrender yourself to him at the right time he if it's part of his plan he will bring a part he will bring your life partner in his way but if you focus on finding someone finding a relationship by force under mask because of age because time is ticking because of this because of that because of family pressure because of i look at myself i feel lonely no you you can't look for those things at that time it won't it doesn't work like that god has to work in the process of your heart and he also has to work in the process of the person that he's intended for you both of you have to be at the right time of that process the right time brings the right person i can say that genuinely because I've experienced it and I'm experiencing it. So please I want to encourage any of you that begin to say, "Oh, I'm not married. Look at the time of my life. I'm not in a relationship. Don't look for those things. Look for God." Thank you. God will bring them. Listen to her. Me, I myself, <laughs> you talk about yourself, yeah? Ruth, when I saw you the first time, I myself I was 64 65 years old. The first time, no, the first time when you 2002, right? When no, you... no, I'm not talking about that one. That one I never knew you, you never knew me. We were, oh, yeah. we were working. It's colleagues. Yeah. We were colleagues. <laughs> huh? And say in 2021, mm. and that August 2021, that day God revealed you to me. I mm. never knew you were my sister. She mm. was my sister. I was his brother. Never lasted for her, never looked for her for anything. Mm. God is a witness to what I'm saying. You know the day the prophet departed. I say, may the end has come. Where will I go? Hmm. I was I was like every human being. I said, the end has come. I was about to give up. What is next, Lord? We we, we too faced our temptation no, to give up. Talk. Let me finish talking. <laughs> so the lady was there said, I have 55 years old or 42 years old. What about me? Huh? At the time people retire, 60 years old. That's the time my life began. I want to repeat. Everybody knows at 60 years all over the world is at age for retirement. <laughs> Nobody will <laughs> hire you. <laughs> Nobody will marry at 60 years. Mm. Why God just for me at 64 years and bring Ruth to me? Why as I never have any child in my life. At 66 years old God gave birth to me. Birth to me. Our life is a testimony. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you refuse to believe, look at us. We are here to good after our personal experience of the mm. goodness of God, of the reality of God. God, if who am I compared to you? God does as he wills. Please put Jesus to where he belongs in your life. He will put you to where you belong in his sight. Mm. God said, I will honor those who honor me. Mm. Which God are we believing? Who is Jesus? Mm. Who is he, our faith in? He comes mm -hmm. to make impossibilities possible in your life. Mm. Who are we to limit Jesus? Our faith should be in God. The Bible says, have faith in God, not mm. in man. Man can tell you all sorts of things. No man is reliable. But Jesus Christ is reliable. I myself, the testament of my life. Mm. I faced a situation that I gave up. I gave up completely. Mm. That day Jesus came to my room. Whether you believe me or not, it's up to you to choose. It's reality of experience that brought me to become a Christian. Not man preach to me and tell me this. Mm. Today, our life is a testimony. Mm. That's why we speak. We speak to everybody that this gospel you believe is not created by man. It's not mental imagination. It's not history. It's reality for those who believe in Jesus. God's promises are real. So when you approach it in a human way, religious way, you may give up, say, I know this uh, cannot work for me. But when you are led by Jesus, when you come to him in spirit and in truth by his spirit, you will see the reality of God in your life. So please, God is faithful. God is absolutely real and faithful. So when you give up, maybe you have given up, you're watching me. Today, show me your doubt. Today, I will prove to you that faith exists and faith is real, that Jesus is real. Mm. 
Don't doubt your faith, doubt your doubts, because they're unreliable. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> the question we have, this Holy Bible, this book of the Bible, everything you need is in this Bible. Where is Jesus today? That's the question I'm asking anybody. Mm. Where is the object of your faith? Do you need to see, to touch, to feel in order to believe? Or do you simply believe the word is true, that Jesus has risen from the dead? I'm asking another question. Mm. When Paul came to Ephesians, he said, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? <laughs> That's the question Paul asked. They say, what's the Holy Spirit? I never heard about Holy Spirit. Who is the Spirit of God to you? Who is the Holy Spirit to you? Of what value is he Of what you? value is the Holy Spirit to you? Mm. The Bible says we are in the period of grace today. Even if the whole world says there is no more Christian on earth, Holy Spirit is here today. I tell you, just believe in Jesus today. In the sacred place where you are today, call Jesus in your heart, in sincerity of heart, and give your testimony. Hmm. But if you call him for selfish reason, classic and material, you will not hurt him. Hmm. But if you call him for salvation's sake, for whom he is, for what he really promises, you will see it in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. Madam who say, 42 years, I have no child. Stop looking for child. Come to Jesus. Hmm. Say, Lord, do like Hannah. Hmm. I trust in you. You are the one that opened the womb of Hannah, opened the womb of Rebecca. You can do it for me. That's what you should say. Mm. Speak the word of faith at all times, even though situations seem to be impossible. It honors Jesus Christ to believe in him, even while everything on the outside contradicts his faithfulness in your life. Mm. That's the question today. When you actually mean it in your heart, that's what God will act on. You know, when you make that decision in your heart, a heart decision that no matter what happens, no matter what comes, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe your word is true. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me salvation. Thank you for forgiving my sin. When you genuinely believe that from your heart and you mean it, then life will never be the same. It's not that you will not face hard times, but God is with you in those hard times. And you will see that he will show himself faithful in your life. I am speaking to you. I'm looking at the camera. You are looking at me, but I'm speaking to you. What is your situation? What has led you to the position where you say, I don't believe anymore. Is Jesus real? Is God real? What has led you to that situation? If you look very clearly, you will see that many of those people is because their faith was based on people, on situation, not on God himself. Mm. But let me tell you something. If you realize that, you can change situation today immediately. God never mind our doubt as long as we are seeking answer from him in the midst of our doubts. Mm -hmm. Are you disappointed by men? Are you disappointed by institutions? Jesus is more than a man. Mm -hmm. He's more than an institution. Holy Spirit is here. Today, at this, we're going to pray today. We are going to pray for any person who believes in Jesus. I'm going to pray for that person that say, I don't believe anymore. Mm. I'm depressed. I'm depressed. Mm. You know, you know de depression is not the language of a Christian. Don't let that come from your mouth that you're depressed. No matter what doubt is passing your mind, no matter if you're feeling bad, if you, no matter the emotions that are rising all around you, continue to cling to the word of God. Don't let that confession come from your lips that you're depressed. No, because that's not the language of a Christian. So... To you who said, I do not believe. Mm. To you who say, I'm hopeless. To you who say, there's no way out. 
today, I'm going to pray to prove you that faith exists, that Jesus is Lord, that Holy Spirit is real if you believe. Remember, Jesus never prayed for any person without asking them a question. When Jesus met the man who was desperate at the pool of Bethesda, the first thing Jesus said, do you want to get well? <laughs> it's a provoking question. I've been there for 38 years, you're asking me this. This man is, doesn't know, can't you see my leg? You're asking me if I want to get well. Jesus will ask the question. When they, they brought to him a child in John chapter 9, who was born blind, Jesus would say, do you believe I can do this for you? When blind Bartimaeus ran to him, Jesus said, what do, do you, you want, want me to do, do for, for you? you? <laughs> I mean, Jesus has all your needs, mm. answer to all your needs. Mm. Jesus is alive. Mm. He's the object of our faith. Whatever we receive from God today come because of our faith in him. When Paul came to the church of Ephesus, they were Christian, they were worshiping, but they saw that the Holy Spirit wasn't there. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, what kind of Holy Spirit? I never heard about this. Paul came, reset their mind, and they received Holy Spirit. God is waiting for you in the midst of your doubt. Simon Peter, when he denied Jesus three times, he gave up. The mm. disciples, when Jesus was crucified, the next day, the first day of the week, they left the upper room. They stopped praying and said, let's go back fishing. Mm. That's what they did. When they went to go back to their former activities, thinking the end has come, Jesus met them at the seesaw and said, cast the net on the right. What about those walking on the way to Emmaus? They'd given up. Yes, completely given up. They're going back to their houses. Mm. And Jesus was walking, and they didn't know Jesus was there. And Jesus said, Oh, you people whose hearts are slow to believe. That is the question. Why our hearts are so slow to believe what God says? Because of our natural circumstances. We, believe, we allow what people say about us to affect our faith. Mm. We allow situation to affect our faith. We allow so many things to influence our faith. What does the Bible say? Have faith in God. Have faith in Jesus. The only object of our faith, there's only one name. Mm. In the book of Acts, if you doubt, go and read what Simon Peter said. There is mm. salvation in no other name than in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healing, salvation, rescue is in his name. So there is hope for you. Yeah. You who say you are given up, we are going to pray. Get connected by faith. We are going to pray to Jesus. If you know someone who's given up on their faith, quickly send them the link of this program so they can join us in prayer. It's not time bound. Mm -hmm. We stand here. Why are we praying? Because we believe in Christ's resurrection. Mm. Why are we praying? We believe that God is real. Why are we praying? Because there is an answer from God. Mm. Why are we praying? Because the, the one who makes the promise is faithful. And Holy Spirit is not missed today. No man can do it for you. You can't see me. I can't see you. But I trust that God, what Jesus said, is true. Holy Spirit is not mix. Mm. And just before we pray, there was one thing that you said, which I think it would be really good for you to break it down, where you said that the, the light of hoping your heart is what Jesus sees, the dream. Like you might have given up on the outside, but your heart's still dreaming for a miracle. Mm -hmm. Your heart's still dreaming for that encounter with Jesus. Your heart's still dreaming for your destiny in Christ Jesus. Mm. And that is what Jesus sees, that small light of hope is what Jesus sees and rekindles. So don't stop dreaming, ever. Don't allow that light to be quenched by circumstances. Mm. When the light of hope is quenched, life becomes a weary road. That's why we give up. 
God never asks us to see how much faith you have, how much strength you have. Never. God said, look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, and Jesus will give you that faith. Exactly. He's not saying how much faith do you have inside your heart. He's saying, look to Jesus and take the faith that you need from him, because he's the author of our faith. He's the finisher of our, of our faith. Even the faith that we exercise to receive Jesus is the faith that God himself puts in our heart. So it's not for you to look in your heart and say, I don't have faith. I don't know how to believe. We need to look to Jesus. That's all we need to do. That's the only command. Our only refuge is in that command of Jesus. Just believe. That is it. Remember what the Bible says. Believing is our connection. Mm. When you believe, you possess. Today, this message is set to reset your belief in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. When Paul came to Ephesus, he talked about Jesus. Mm. When he reset their faith in, his, in Christ's mm. ability. We believe in Christ's ability. That's why we pray. Mm. We believe in God's ability. That's why we pray. Mm. We believe in the ability of the Holy Ghost, his love and compassion to you. Mm. It's not about you. You will never deserve anything. I don't deserve anything. It's grace and mercy. Jesus has done everything for you and me at the cross of Calvary. Mm. Everything we receive is by grace and mercy. And God will never close his heart to anybody who comes to him. Jesus said, I will never reject anybody who comes to me. Mm. Jesus walked purpose toward these people. You are not the one to call for him. He's looking for you. Mm. He wants to change your life. He wants to answer you in his own ways and times. Mm. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So right now, what is the situation? We saw barrenness. One man said, I created my business. I just wrote it now. That I invested, I have no customer. <laughs> wow. I'm smiling. Some people say, I've been praying. I'm going to, uh, this brother, I will say. This man said, 23 years old, raised by a dealer. Sometimes I wonder if God really has a purpose in my life, considering how I grew up. Ah. It's not about where you come from. God never considers your past or your background to determine your future. Mm. Mohale, Sydney. Mm. It's not where you come from that matters. Mm. Jesus never considers your past to give you a future. Mm. He came to change your past and give you a future today. If you believe today mm. is opportunity. No matter how many times you pray and fast, no matter how long you are going to church, it's not what you do, it is grace. Mm. We don't trade with God. No one is righteous. We believe in God's grace and mercy for our lives. That's why we are here to pray mm. today. And there are many people that don't believe at all. They are not Christian, but Jesus loved them with the same love. Mm. That person, if his heart turned to Christ one second, that person will receive the grace we have today. It is never too late for anyone who believes in Jesus. You need to see the light. When you acknowledge your situation and you see your need for him and your heart is genuine, you will see him. He will visit you. He's knocking at the door. He will never force himself to anyone. Because faith is a conviction. So now, which situation is more desperate than the Israelite? Which situation is more desperate than the one of Job? Mm. Which situation is more desperate than Daniel in the lion den? Which situation is more desperate than the apostles face in the persecution they had? Mm. But today, their faith is what brought this Bible today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever mm. so we're going to pray let's pray let us pray i'm praying because i believe mm. but put your faith in jesus put your faith in him he's the only one who can change your life mm. he said where two or three are gathered in my name I am in their midst. Matthew chapter 
20, 18 verse 20. Yes, that's what Jesus said. He who believes in me and pray without doubting, whatever you ask, you will see it happen. How God will do it for you, I don't know. When he will do it, I don't know. But I believe today, if you pray, he said, you must believe it has been done. God promised to Abraham, you will have this. You believe. Believing is possessing. You have to believe first before you see it happen. You have to believe before you see the result. Let's pray. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we are here praying. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. Lord, we stand in your presence. We believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are praying, Lord, for that weary soul, mm -hmm. that brother, that sister, that person who is absolutely abandoned, that person who is saying he has given up his faith, that person who may be rejected by situation, condemned by people, no job, no trouble. That person who has been praying for so long and feel forsaken. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Locate that person in your mercy at the time of your salvation. At your appointed time, I pray. Visit that person by your spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those who are in the dark, let they be light in the name of Jesus. We pray for the light of life. Let them see the light. Mm. Let them see the way out. Let them see your mighty hand at work in the name of Jesus. Lord, you pray for Simon Peter so his faith will not fail. Mm. You are the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith. Lord Jesus, we commit to you any person who is under the influence of this prayer to your care, to your mercy, to your presence, to your omnipotent power. Lord, locate that person in your mercy in the name of Jesus. Your grace, your light come to change this life from darkness to the light in the name of Jesus. From doubt to faith in the name of Jesus. Reveal your purpose. Reveal your purpose. Reveal your purpose. Reveal your way. Touch this life. Lord, you walked towards the well of Jacob to meet the Samaritan woman and you changed her life. Jesus, you walked toward the man at the pool of Bethesda who gave up and you removed hopelessness and touched his life forever. Lord, you walked towards Jericho and you met Zacchaeus and you changed his life. We call your name because you are Lord. That person who is hopeless, that person who is in trouble, that person who has lost faith, who say, I'm not even a believer, let your mercy speak for that person in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy locate that person in the name of Jesus. Reveal yourself. Reveal your way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Whatever is your situation, bring it to Jesus. Mm. Bring it to him, Lord. Well, when we pray, we set aside every single person. All the burden, we intercede. Jeremiah 42, he prayed for his people. He brought the request to you as we have read. And Jeremiah 42 verse 7, answer came after 10 days. Lord, we are standing in prayer for our brothers, for our sisters, for any person, even unbelievers, who is in trouble. Today, in the name of Jesus, I pray, let your answer come. Let your answer come. Visit that person in his loneliness. Visit that person at the point of despair. Visit that person at the point of giving up. Leave that person. Meet that person. Meet that person. Reveal yourself. Bring that person to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Rescue come in the name of Jesus. Mm. Solution come in the name of Jesus. Let the light of Christ be revealed to you in the name of Jesus. To pass from darkness to the light. From doubt to faith. From hopelessness to faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Let your faithfulness be revealed. Touch them, Lord, with your healing touch. Touch them, Lord, with breakthrough. Touch them, though. Put the rivers of water in the wilderness of their lives. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put an end to every situation that causes doubt. 
put an end Lord, to any hardship, Lord. Remove the burden and be the peace of heart in the name of Jesus. That person has been barren for so many years. Remember that person, Lord, as you remember Hannah, as you remember Sarah, Rachel, Rebecca, Tamar, Ruth, and so many women. Touch them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in mercy. Touch that person in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the person that's suffering from sickness, from hopelessness, mm. visit that person and reveal yourself, Lord Jesus. Mm. Reveal your grace, your healing power to that person by your spirit, in the name of Jesus, to know that you are Lord, you are God, you are the healer, you are the redeemer, you are the savior. Reveal yourself, reveal yourself, reveal yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, every burden upon the soul, the burden that cloud their mind, that cloud their heart. Let that burden be removed by your name, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to the mountain. I speak to that mountain in your life. I say, you mountain, give way in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that situation of hopelessness. I speak to that situation of word of faith. In the name of Jesus, leave my people. Leave their house. Leave their home, leave their heart. I say, live in the name of Jesus. Whatever mountain of situation of circumstances standing before you, I command that mountain to be divided, to be leveled in the name of Jesus. Begin to see the light of Jesus. Begin to see the light of Christ. Begin to see the light in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, set in motion divine forces to enter that person, to enter the house in the name of Jesus, to change their life, to change their life. To change their life for good, to reveal your way, to reveal your name in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered from doubt in the name of Jesus. Let there be light. Let there be faith. Let there be hope. Let there be solution from heaven in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you have said to Paul, I have called you and sent you for them to pass out of the power of Satan to the power of God out of darkness into your light and to receive the promise of heaven. Let your promise be fulfilled in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Your mercy walked toward them. Locate them in your mercy by your spirit. Locate them in your favor and change their life. Let them know that you are Lord, you are God, to embrace your way and give testimony to your goodness. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Amen. Blessed are those who believe. That's what mm. Jesus said. When Jesus came to Martha, John 11. If you believe. If you believe. You will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said to you. If you believe in who? In Jesus, not in man. Mm -hmm. You will see the glory of God in your life and you will testify that Jesus is alive. Mm. God bless you. The Lord be with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, Amen. this prayer is not time bound, so you can watch it, rewatch it. The anointing of God is powerful. Put your demand on that anointing. Let your faith join our faith. And remember, it's faith in Jesus Christ. So we can stop Satan interfering in your life, in your mind, bringing you to doubt, bringing you to despair, tempting you to give up. Don't give in to the temptation to give up because Jesus never gives up on you. Before you go, I was about to close my Bible. Something ring in my heart. I want to share with you what God put in my heart. It's the Bible. It's not me, the Bible. I'm going to give you some verses that just pump to my spirit now. I'm going to write it. Please write it and pray these verses I give you from now to next time we meet. Mm. It's the Holy Spirit, not me. I'm going to give you the references and I will read it for you. Psalm 37, verse 4. It says, Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's the light that is still shining in your heart. Mm. Psalm 37, verse 18. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Amen. You go to verse 34. Wait on the Lord Jesus Christ and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. Last verse, verse 39. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, 
He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Psalm 37, verse 4, verse 18, verse 34, verse 39 and 40. We're going to read it on the board. Pray over it. We'll put it on the UOG social media uh, as a post. So make sure you read those verses that the Holy Spirit has revealed. You meditate on them. And that's your assignment from God for the week. Psalm 37, verse 4. Verse 18, I repeat, verse 34, and verse 39, and verse 40. Mm. Read it and bring it to the altar of your prayer before Jesus. You can see it on the screen, actually, Take right now. Take this word and pray and meditate. You will see the faithfulness of Jesus. So do not give up. That is the message today. The only person that's supposed to give up is not you. It's the devil. <laughs> because he has no hope. Yeah. You have hope because Jesus is alive. Apostle Peter called it, we have a living hope by yeah. the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. Thank you so much.